Hey, good morning, my friends. Uh, this is Pastor Gerald Wheaton from Grace Bible Church. Uh, I want to say it's been a few days uh, since I put on a video. Uh, I've spent this past week working on my writing skills. Uh, that's not something that I've done much in the past, but the Lord had kind of led me uh, down that path to uh, write a little bit. I hope and pray that the things that have been written, that it has been edifying uh, to you that have uh, made your visit. Uh, I'm just here as a servant uh, to all of those that uh, have a desire to want to know God, to want to know his word. Uh, and I've just made myself available uh, to be a friend uh, to all of you. Now, our word for today is is this. I, I'm going to give it to you in a phrase. Knowing the things of God. Wow. Knowing the things of God. I want you to understand that in this day in which we live, there seems to be a lot of confusion uh, when it comes to knowing the things of God. And so what I'd like to do today is just give a couple of scriptures to try to give some basic understanding and to lay a foundation as to how we can know the things of God. Now, our scripture passage this morning, if you have your Bible in front of you, I want you to go to 1 Corinthians. Uh, we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Just got two verses that we're going to look at. Uh, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Uh, and then we're going to look at verse 14. Now, my reason for picking these verses, I, I want to give you another word to tie in with these words, with these verses, and it is that word absolute. I want you to understand that God's word uh, is not a word of confusion. Uh, I want you to understand that there's a lot of things that God says, and God deals in absolutes. And if I'm going to give definition as to what an absolute is, let me put it to you like this. It is what it is. Doesn't matter what you say, but it does matter what God says. Okay? And so, once again, we get back to the question, how can we know the things of God? Well, looking at verse 11, God is going to give some instruction, and it will help. And notice what he says in the verse. Notice what Paul says. He says, For what man knoweth the things of a man, except the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God but the spirit of God. Now, Paul is dealing with an absolute. And the main thing that he's saying in the verse is that if we're going to know the things of God, it is only by the Spirit of God that we can know. You know, you can study a thing out and you can spend a whole lot of energy and never really get the understanding. But what Paul is saying in the verse is that it is only the Spirit of God that knows the things of God. And so it goes without saying that if you're a child of God and the Spirit of God is in you, it is then that you can know the things of God because the Spirit of God will help you and enlighten you as to what God is saying. Now, the flip side of that is that if you are not saved, then you don't stand a chance uh, because God is not in you. Guess what? He does not entitle you to know his business. Let me give you a short story. Maybe this will help just a little bit because you know when you look at the verse the first part of verse 11 it says this it says for what man knoweth the things of a man say the spirit of man which is in him I want you to understand this you know from man to man we can communicate and we can talk with each other we can comfort we can Counsel, we can get understanding, and the reason that's true uh, among human beings is because we all have the same spirit. We have the spirit of a man. Okay, now let me give you another example. 
Uh, let's talk about animals. Let's talk about pets because a lot of us, we've got dogs and we've got cats and we've got horses. And you know what? We spend a lot of time talking to them. I've done the same thing. I had a dog uh, that I talked to and I swore up and down that when I talked, that dog understood every word that I spoke. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. That dog don't have a clue. He does not have a clue as to what we speak. Why? Because he does not have the spirit of a man, but he's got the spirit of a dog. I want you to understand, you might think they understand, but a lot of that uh, is nothing more than training and repetition. Uh, and, and they can pick up on some things, but guess what? They don't really understand. And so I want you to understand that when it comes to knowing God, guess what? We're not going to understand God. We're not going to understand Him unless the Spirit of God is in us. And that's what Paul is saying in the passage. You know, uh, a lot of times when uh, we go to the Bible bookstore and we've got all of these versions of the Bible and they just go out of their way trying to break down scriptures and to simplify and to simplify and to simplify and make it easy to where even a baby can read it and understand it. Well, guess what? <laughs> That's not the way it works. If the Spirit of God is not in you, you will not be able to comprehend the things of God. This is what Paul is saying in the verse. Now, to my unsaved friend, I want you to understand, when it comes to God's Word, if you're confused, well, God knows all about that. And the reason that you are confused is because there is a gulf between you and God. Look at verse 14 in the passage. Uh, notice what it says, and it gives another absolute truth. Listen to what Paul says. He says, But the natural man receiveth, underline it now, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Let me say that to you again. Uh, the natural man is uh, the man in his unsaved state. The natural man is the one that is yet in Adam, dead in sins and trespasses. The natural man is the one in which there is no spiritual activity between him and God. And so with all of that being said, the natural man that abideth in death and darkness cannot comprehend the light of God's word. Let me put it to you another way. It is only the children of God who have been invited into the things of God. God has kept out the unsaved that the word of God will continue and forever be a mystery to them. That is why there is so much confusion in our churches, uh, in our country, when it comes to God's Word. You know, one more verse that I want to leave you with, and it's in the same uh, passage of Scripture. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to look at verse 9, okay? And notice what it says. It says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, here it is, the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. I want you to understand, the unsaved man, his mind is not on God. His mind is not on the things of God. I want you to understand that when it comes to just human beings period. If God doesn't 
move on us and enlighten us. Uh, we don't care about God. We don't care about this book. I want you to understand that it is that type of apathy that has taken over the church. There's no longer a desire for the things of God. Even though God has put himself in us, even though God has given us of his spirit that we might know, we're living in a day to where the man words, let me say that again, where man's words, man's words have prominence over God's word. Just something to think about. If you're struggling and getting an understanding, two things. Either you're not saved and the Spirit of God is not dwelling in you, or you're a babe, but you're not spending enough time seeking God in His Word. I hope and pray that something we said to be of some benefit to you. Once again, this is Pastor Whedon. Well, before I sign off, let me say this to all of you that tune in. Another thing that I would like to do to be a help to all of those that have a desire to want to know God. If you have any Bible questions, if there's anything that I can help you in bringing understanding, well, I want you to get those Bible questions to me. And if the Lord says the same, I will address them on future words of today uh, to be a benefit to the body. I'm nothing more than a servant. I hope and pray that I can help you through God's leading. Once again, this is Pastor Gerald Wheaton uh, from Grace Bible Church in Willis, Texas, signing off. want to say to all of the saints, be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.